Well, good morning there. Nice to see you this morning. How about a little grace midweek? Why not? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday again. Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. Wow, what a great time to be with you. It's such a beautiful day of spring. It's a shame to be inside, so we're going outside. We're going to take our chance with the mowers and the elements. We're going to do it. But we're going to worship the Lord this morning. We're going to talk about the good things of the Lord. Hello, Wanda. Nice to see you this morning. We're going to have a little round table today. Get your coffee, get your toast, anything you want to get, and just sit right down here. Hello, Thelma. God bless you. Good to see you. I hope this is going to be your best day in a while. So let's pray for that, that all of us have great days today. It's, it's a great day in the Lord this morning. That much I know. But what do you say we do it with health and happiness and joy? What do you say we do that? Let's just decide right now. That's the way we're going to conduct business today on May 24th. Really good to be with you. Hello, Dorothy. God bless you. Denise, God bless you. It is a beautiful morning. My goodness, it's a, it's a beautiful morning. The creation of the Lord is worth worth uh, enjoying. We worship him, but we enjoy his creation. Let's do. Shirley, God bless you. It's still okay to have a good hot cup of coffee. If you like, what do you say we do that also? Oh, we've got a good one for you this morning. Hello, Doug. Good to see you. God bless you. Always a pleasure to see you out and about throughout the week. We are coming to you again from John. I'm telling you, I probably said this a hundred times in, in what, three and a quarter years of doing devotions. I probably said it a hundred times that I love this section of scripture and this is no difference. This is no different. This scripture from John chapter four just blesses me every time I read it. I'm looking at the screen and uh, Thelma's going down for a three month cancer checkup. We pray to the Lord that that screen is clear. We pray that there is total healing there. You enjoy your trip to Texas and marvel in the work of the Lord. He gets all the glory. You know that, don't you? He gets all the glory for the goodness that we have and the health that we have. Sometimes we never thank the Lord for the health we do have. We're quick to respond when it goes the other way. But sometimes just health, Lord, thank you so much for the health that you've given. Yeah, well, I've got some infirmities. Yeah, but you've got a lot of other things of health. And uh, so what do you say we do it with joy and happiness? Hello, Alice Jean. Last drink, I promise. Last drink. Good to be with you this morning. We'll get your coffee. Let's have a little coffee clatch this morning. We're going to get started because I've got mowers. I think these guys are set at 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. They're going to have to get another day next door, people. You've got to get another day. I was here first. Yeah, God bless you. Good morning. Really good to be with you. It's just a great day in the Lord this morning. Well, what do you say we go ahead and turn to John chapter 4, verses 3 through 9. I've entitled this devotion, this morning's devotion, Allow the Lord Jesus to Shock the Culture of Your Life. Well, that's an interesting statement. What do you say we allow the Lord Jesus to shock the culture that is in our life? That which we have come to understand, that which has become to be status quo, the way we treat people, what do you say we allow the Lord Jesus to step in that and shock the culture of our lives? We've got the little flag behind us this morning. We're celebrating Memorial Day coming up. Thank you all to you men and women that have served this country faithfully. Maybe your uh, husbands and wives have done so. Honest to goodness, we thank you for uh, paying the price and being able to stand on that line. So, uh, so many others, like myself, didn't have to do. But I always appreciate the, uh, the service that the servicemen have paid. I know people, that's good people, been in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. I know people in all of them. And I say, God bless you for that. What do you say we preserve this country because that they fought to, uh, that they fought to keep? What do you say we do our best to preserve this country? And, uh, and cause this country to be a beacon for the Lord Jesus. What do you say we do that together? Let's do. Uh, allow the Lord Jesus to shock the culture of your life. We're going to get started. John chapter 4, verses 3 through 9. Again, I love this. We're going to start in verse 3 this morning. If you've got your tablet, John chapter 4, verse 3. Here we go. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. Catch verse 4. 
but he needed to go through Samaria. Oh, he needed to do that, huh? Okay, that's interesting. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, set thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. When the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink of me, a Samaritan? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Let's go to the Lord this morning. Father, it is good to be in your, in your word again this morning. When, there, when we're in your word, there is nourishment. There is goodness. And uh, Father, I pray that you would give us all that we need to get out of it as we take a bite of food and receive nourishment from it, as we chew on your word this morning, I pray that you would flood us with nourishment from your word. Speak to us in ways that you never have before. Shock our culture, Lord, to be ambassadors for you. In Jesus' name. All right, as we look at the scripture, you know there's just a lot going on in that. There's verses three through nine, and there is a lot going on. I thought for me to talk about each and every one of those things, I'm gonna to try to mention a few things. I love that that uh, he had, he was going through Samaria. He needed to go through Samaria. He needed to go through there, huh? Because he had an appointment. He had an appointment with a woman, a single woman, and would even minister to the whole town of Samaria. He had an appointment. She just didn't know it. He needed to go through Samaria. There's a lot of things going on. First, verse six says that Jesus was wearied from his journey. I find that interesting. Not only was he weary from the jury journey, it talks that he sat down, he was tired, and he was thirsty. Now, I don't know how he talked them into going into the town of Samaria and getting food. That is a shock to me, but they left him out there by himself. He was totally drained. He was tired, hungry, and thirsty. Now, I ask you the question, can you imagine the God of the universe being weary, tired, and thirsty? I think that shows you the human side of the Lord Jesus. You know, he was fully God, but he was fully man also. So he was man and he was weary and tired and thirsty. You know what? He can associate with each one of us. When you go to him in prayer and you ask the Lord Jesus, Lord, I am tired. I, I am just exhausted. I am physically exhausted. God, I am hungry. I am thirsty. I haven't anything to eat right at this particular moment. You know what the Lord Jesus isn't saying? I have no idea how you feel because I've never felt that before. He knows exactly what it means to be tired, thirsty, and hungry. He knows exactly. I want to say to you this morning, and don't forget this line. Often, when we feel like we are, our, we, all right, let me say it right. When we are at our weakest point, that is many times when we are set to be used by the Lord to the greatest desire the greatest degree. When we are tired and, and, and thirsty and weak, that is many times when the Lord will choose to use you to the greatest degree in a situation. Lord, I don't have the strength. That is when you're perfect to be used by the Lord. And I think it's the same way here. I throw that in there because I know what 2 Corinthians says in verses 12, 12, 10. Chapter 12, verse 10, it says this, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When you are weak, it could well be that the Lord is saying, okay, good, we've got you right where I want you. I'm setting the table for you to do a great work for me. Let's be honest this morning. We've all seen people that we would refer to as social outcasts. Oh, maybe we don't call that to them, too, but we refer to them as social outcasts. We all know people like that. Now, these are people that, for whatever reason, society looks down upon. Society says these are not the, the, the people we like to put on display. These are not our finest moment. We all know people like that. Maybe it's their unavoidable, unavoidable background. Maybe it's because of the background they came from. They can't help it. There's nothing they can do to help it, but that's the background that they came from, and that's who they are. But we choose to see them as different. We count them as different. 
Maybe it's not unavoidable. Maybe it's the choices that they make. They make bad choices. They continue to make bad choices one right after another and uh, on how they conduct their lives. And because they do that, society looks down upon them. You know anybody like that? That Yeah, you're saying, yeah, but for the grace of God, there go I. They continue to make poor choices and society says, we don't consider you as, as, uh, as to our level. We see you as a lower level. Maybe it's unavoidable, maybe it's avoidable, but they make bad choices. You understand the people that I'm talking about. We like to play judge and jury. Now, maybe we don't consciously do that, but we like to play judge and jury, and we give ourselves the right to decide who's in and who's out, if you want to call it that. Who's in to our, who are those people we associate? I don't associate with those people because they're not like me. You understand who that is. The Samaritans were individuals that the Jewish people looked down upon, and they had no interaction with. The Jewish people looked down upon this. These were people that came from Assyria and Persian and intermarried with the Jewish people. So they were half Jewish, but they were half Gentile. And you know what that made them? It made them unclean. These were people that the Jewish people said, we have nothing to do with the people of Samaritan. Maybe it wasn't even their fault. It doesn't make any difference. They were social outcasts to the Jewish people. Nothing to do with them. You know anybody in life that you've ever felt like, I don't talk to them. I'm sorry, I just can't. They are not to my level. And uh, so you know who I'm talking about. Most Jewish travelers, when they went through that region to get to the north side of Israel, they would go one of two ways. They would go along the coast. They would go a long way out of, their, uh, out of the route to go along the coast. Or they would cross the Jordan River and go up the other side. They would do that because they were not about to go through Samaria. Oh, it's a longer journey. It's days longer. I don't care. I'm not going through Samaria. I'm not doing it. Jesus chose to go right through the dot, right through the shortcut of Samaria because he had a divine appointment. Why did he do that? Why didn't he go around like every... Because he had an appointment. And the disciples, don't you know, 12 apostles walking with him are thinking, are we really going through Samaria? Are we going through Samaria? We don't do that. That's not what we do. But he said we're going through Samaria. And then they get to the well and Jesus says, hey, go on into town and buy food. From the Samaritans? Really? That's what's taking place right here. Going through Samaria, Jesus does not experience culture shock. He doesn't experience culture shock going through there. Rather, he shocks the culture. That's the title of the devotion. He shocks the culture. Now it's around high noon, and I know it says the sixth hour. The Jewish time of the sixth hour is high noon. Jesus finds himself at the well in the middle of high noon at the heat of the day when the apostles went in town to buy food. Now I find that interesting because Jesus fed 5,000 by, by multiplying fish and loaves. Oh, he could have done that here. But you never see him doing that for his own benefit. You never see him satisfying himself performing miracles to do that. Yet, they go to get food because Jesus is hungry, thirsty, and tired. I think, I think all that stuff is amazing to me. The woman approaches the well in the heat of the day. Now, why the heat of the day? Now, why not in the morning when it's cool or in the late afternoon when it's cool? That's an interesting thought also. I'd say it's because of her social outcast, because we're about to learn of this woman's past. We are about to learn of her past, and there was no doubt the other women of the town, even the town of Samaria, wanted nothing to do with this lady. She probably got tired of being teased, ridiculed, laughed at, and therefore I will go when no one else is there. I will go during the heat of the day. She has an appointment with the Lord Jesus. She doesn't even know that. And it's amazing because as I look at this scripture, Jesus shatters all these Jewish laws in numerous ways. He just shatters it when she approaches him. She, she, she can't believe that he's socializing with her. First, men don't speak to women. Anyone in those days, in public. Men don't speak to, to women in public. Second, she was a Samaritan and he was a Jew. And Jews had no conversation with Samaritans. And third, he was supposed to be a spiritual rabbi, one that was a spiritual teacher. 
And, she, and I would say she was less than a moral woman. But that didn't matter to the Lord Jesus. Last, he would even drink from the same jug, the same ladle that she drank from. That is unheard of in those days. I want to make sure you understand that. Jesus shocks the culture by talking to a lady that he shouldn't be talking to. Culture said don't talk to her. The status said don't talk to her. He didn't care. He didn't care. And I want to leave you with this thought. I may not be done with the woman at the well. Yeah, tune in next week and find out. I want to leave you with this thought. To a holy God, you and I, like the Samaritan woman, are unclean. We are unclean. I hope that doesn't come as a shock to you. But two, when you put us up next to a holy God, we, folks, are unclean. I want to say to you, we are damaged goods. Many of you understand that. Some of you will bristle with that a little bit and say, damaged goods. But held up next to a holy God, the spotlight of a holy God, we find that we are damaged goods. And you know what? Each one of us have a story. And maybe we're not very proud of that story. We all have a past, a string, a thread, a story that we're not very proud of. Let me ask you a question this morning. You know why Jesus came? You know why he came to this earth? Because he had an appointment, folks. He had an appointment to save people like you and I. He had an appointment to save folks like you and I. And I say to you this morning, don't be afraid to come to, come to the well of living water and receive from the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to put your past aside, the thread of past aside that I would rather keep concealed, that I would rather not open and talk about. Don't be afraid to bring your past and come to the Lord Jesus because he will drink at the well with you. And he is asking you today, would you give me a drink? And I'm asking you this morning, open up and give the Lord Jesus a drink from what you've been drinking and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, that we are sinners. We are damaged goods that have a savior. I'm not thanking you that we're sinners. I'm thanking you that you love sinners and that you provide for sinners and you give drink to those who are, who are sinners, those who are weak, those who are thirsty, those who are hungry, and we can find nourishment in you. I thank you for your goodness. I pray that as people see this video, whether they watched it live or they watched it later or somehow found it in an archive, I pray that the message would go forth of the love of the Lord to a lost world out there. And I pray that it would be received because the, this message is talking to you, to each and every one of you. Would you receive it in Jesus' name? God bless you this morning. Good message, not because I gave it, but because it's a great message from John chapter 4. The woman at the well, would you let the Lord shock your culture? Don't be so set in your ways that the Lord can't shock your culture. God bless all of you. I hope you finished your cup of coffee that we started with. Hope it hadn't gone cold. It was really okay for you to drink it as we went along. It didn't bother me a bit. God bless you. Would you have a great day in the Lord? And we will see you when we do. God bless you.